The AMD Radeon RX 7800 XT is the best mid to high end GPU of 2024. And here's why. Well judging by the specs right off the bat, it should tell you why. While it does have considerably fewer cores than the 4070, it flaunts it with a considerably higher team during ROP count. Not to mention that you get 4GB more VRAM compared to the 4070. The 4070 does have the upper hand in memory technology using GDDR6X compared to the standard GDDR6 on the 7800 XT. But the 7800 XT strikes back with the higher memory bus. On top of all that, the 7800 XT costs $10 less. So more team use and ROPs, more VRAM, a bigger bus width, all the while costing $10 less than the 4070, it sounds like a good deal to me. And this holds up when we look at gaming performance at 1080p in traditional rasterization. The 7800 XT holds the top spot all the time. And its leads aren't petty. The 7800 XT is flexing hard, especially in games like Rainbow Six Siege, where it pulls a massive lead over the 4070. The 7800 XT is truly a force to be reckoned with. There was only one particular instance where the 7800 XT and 4070 were neck and neck. And that's in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. In average FPS, the 7800 XT pulls a considerable lead of 17% over the 4070 showing its dominance in traditional rasterization. Now obviously you won't be buying this GPU just for 1080p, so let's see how it performs at 1440p, again in rasterization. And as expected, the gap widens dramatically as we become more GPU limited, making the 7800 XT's lead over the 4070 all the more impressive. It's just amazing how much of a performer the 7800 XT is, especially at this price point. Besting a more expensive card, if all you do is play non-ray trace games, then this is a GPU for you. And that's backed up by the 7800 XT pulling a 19% lead over the 4070, further distilling its absolute rasterized gaming prowess at 1440p. It'll come at no surprise that the 7800 XT is also the better value, but not just by a small margin, by 20% being an absolute bang for your buck at this price range. The 7800 XT's efficiency isn't bad either, but the 4070 does best the 7800 XT here by 23%. But it's not like the 7800 XT's efficiency is horrible or anything, as a serviceable in my opinion. However, in ray tracing starting at 1080p, things take a turn for the worse, as the RTX 4070 finally overtakes the 7800 XT with considerable leads. In Cyberpunk 2077, the 4070 delivers a much more playable experience compared to the 7800 XT. Shadow of the Tomb Raider continues this feat, but the gap isn't as wide as in Cyberpunk 2077, thanks to Shadow of the Tomb Raider being pretty light when it comes to ray tracing, only having ray trace shadows. Average FPS shows the 4070 taking a 12% lead over the 7800 XT, so if you care more about ray tracing, the 4070 is going to be the better pick. 1440p while ray tracing does kind of affirm this, but it's not like the 7800 XT was horrible at ray tracing. 1440p highlights a smaller difference between the 4070 and 7800 XT, especially in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Looking at averages, this time around the 4070 only takes a 9% lead over the 7800 XT, which confirms our theory that the gap got smaller between these cards. It's highlighting that we're becoming more GPU limited, as the real differences start to show. And look at this, the 4070 only has 6% more performance per dollar, meaning if the RTX 4070 were priced any higher, the 7800 XT would probably be the better value. Ray tracing on Radeon really isn't that bad, it's still a good bit behind the video in terms of overall performance. But in this instance, we see the 7800 XT neck and neck when it comes to value. Pretty much to the point that if the 4070 were priced any higher, the 7800 XT would be the better value. Considering performance we saw in rasterization, I would say overall, the 7800 XT is the better pick. However, unlike the pretty acceptable efficiency that we saw in rasterization, Efficiency while ray tracing is a whole different story, as the 4070 is 63% more efficient than the 7800 XT. If you care about saving money on your monthly power bill while having similar performance, the 4070 is going to be a better choice. But if you don't care about all that, the 7800 XT is still going to be a great choice. But it shows that to get around the same performance as the 4070, the 7800 XT has to chug power. Now testing the 4070 with DLSS 3 and the 7800 XT with HyperRx with fluid motion frames, in Forza Horizon 5 at 1440p, the 4070 shows an 18% lead over the RX 7800 XT, showing that frame generation continues to dominate against AMD's fluid motion frames. And in Cyberpunk 2077, 
This is even more clear, as while ray tracing, the 4070 takes a massive 97% lead over the 7800 XT, showing that while the Hyper RX is impressive, it struggles to pull its weight against DLSS 3. In benchmarks starting with Blender, Nvidia also shows dominance here, thanks to its excellent CUDA integration. The RTX 4070 shows a massive 102% lead versus the RX 7800 XT. However, in spec view perf, the tables turn as the 7800 XT dominates compared to the 4070, in at least 3DS Max and Maya. In SOLIDWORKS, the 4070 does manage to turn a page against the 7800 XT by considerable margin. Overall, AMD is excellent for these applications in terms of performance. Even in Premiere Pro using Pugibench, the 7800 XT is neck and neck against the 4070. However, the 4070 does lead by 4%, but the 7800 XT's performance is surprising when you consider their history with encoding performance. This is also a feat that continues right into After Effects, with the 4070 and 7800 XT this time coming closer as the 4070 only beats the 7800 XT by only 2%. What this would come down to is the 7800 XT's excellent 3D rendering performance, which allows it to be in the RTX 4070's rearview mirror. But due to Nvidia's great encoding performance, especially in Premiere Pro, it's able to trail the 7800 XT. Overclocking on the 7800 XT, left a little to be desired, pushing the power limit to 115%, the core clock from 2639MHz to 3000MHz, and finally the memory from 2438MHz to 2562MHz only led to a minuscule increase of about less than a percent. Not only that, the 1.1% lows actually decreased. To top it all off, the power consumption increased by 6%, which isn't huge in theory, but when you consider that we got literally no increase in performance, it's pretty disappointing. Thankfully, the temperatures went down, but that's almost certainly due to the noise levels increasing by 6%, and thus the fan speed increasing. Alright folks, we've covered a lot, and it's time to draw a comprehensive conclusion on the AMD rating on RX 7800 XT. In a world where every frame counts, and every dollar matters, this GPU emerges as a true champion, solidifying its position as the best mid to high end GPU of 2024. Let's revisit a few key points that make the 7800 XT stand out. When it comes to the specs, it's a strategic powerhouse, offering more TMUs, ROPs, VRAM and a wider memory bus compared to its competitor, the 4070. And guess what? It does all this while costing you $10 less. In terms of sheer value, the 7800 XT takes the lead by a whopping 20%. When we delved into traditional rasterization gaming, the 7800 XT showcases dominance at 1080p and 1440p, pulling ahead of the 4070 with significant leads. The performance but all the ratio was undeniably in favour of the 7800 XT, making it a stellar choice for non ray trace gaming enthusiasts. Now let's talk about ray tracing. The 4070 does outshine the 7800 XT in this department, though the margin is not insurmountable. The 7800 XT holds its ground, and when you consider the price difference, it becomes clear that the AMD option is the better overall pick for most users. Efficiency becomes a point of consideration, especially in ray tracing scenarios. The 4070 takes the lead here, being 63% more efficient which may matter if you're conscious about power consumption. However, if you're looking for pure performance and value, the 7800 XT holds its own. Lastly, delving into content creation and productivity, the 7800 XT showcases its prowess in spec view perf, particularly in applications like 3ds Max, providing versatility beyond gaming. It goes neck and neck with the 4070 in video editing tasks, further emphasizing its well-rounded capabilities. Overclocking might not be its strongest suit, but considering the overall package, the RX 7800 XT remains a compelling choice. In conclusion, if you're seeking the best mid to high end GPU in 2024 that combines stellar gaming performance, impressive value and commendable versatility across various applications, the AMD Radeon RX 7800 XT is the clear winner. Anyways guys, that's all for today. Make sure to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell. Also make sure to check out this video on the screen right now.